launched. In 2012 when we launched, it, it wasn't like this marketplace of entrepreneurs. I knew that it was time to grow. We had just like went on tour with the lip bar truck and I knew that people wanted to have this very intimate experience with makeup. Roscoe, I'm at the lip bar truck. Look at that precious baby. What was her name? I forgot. Could you name her? I, I was trying to figure that out and I couldn't, I couldn't. Number one favorite moment where I forgot what city we were in, maybe Tallahassee, but it started raining on the bus. Yes. When we did a pop-up and yep. we didn't know what to do. Yeah. We had a leak at the top of the bus and so we were doing a pop-up and it just started fucking raining in the bus. That was so crazy, but what Roscoe was, we, oh, customers didn't care. They were like, I want this lipstick. They were like, this is black owned. This is vegan. These are fun colors. They were covering up their hairs and they were buying lipsticks. That's yes. And then we like climbed on top and put a tarp and then had to just figure it out. Cause we were like, we were miles away from home, Dorothy. For sure. <laughs> yeah. When I really think about like the measures that were taken, not even to like build this truck or just really to build this business and this just like fearlessness, like it's fearlessness that got us here. Entrepreneurship is like when you go to an amusement park and you see that really scary roller coaster and you're like, I'm not getting on that. Absolutely not, not a chance in hell. But your homegirl grabs your hand. She's like, come on, it's gonna be fun. Don't worry, I'm gonna hold on to you. So against your better judgment, you get on this roller coaster and it's literally the best time you've ever had in your life. That's what the lip bar is like. It's funny because lots of people think that Shark Tank was like the big thing that changed the lip bar. But really it wasn't. Like when we went on Shark Tank, like they were so fucking mean. We decided to an innovative idea to build a lip bar mobile. So a what? Oh, have you built this? It's actually it's being converted process. in Detroit right now. Oh, that is such a bad idea. But beyond that, it was like, we didn't know what we were doing. We were such still a scrappy business. We weren't doing any advertising. I think that it gave us some brand awareness, but we didn't make a lot of money from Shark Tank. People were like, oh, it blew up after Shark Tank. No, it didn't. When the lip bar really started growing is when we went into Target. We were the first like indie brand that they launched. Like we launched in 44 stores. I will never forget like how we got into Target. Cause look now, you know, now it's cool to support black businesses. Like everybody in their mama is a business owner, but also people are going after like the black dollar. People want the multicultural audience. But in 2014, 2015, like nobody was like starting businesses like that. So I was like, I gotta get into a retailer. So I literally started stalking Target buyers. Like uh, that determination, like my investor that I have, like was because I was like literally stalking him. So like I knew that reaching out to people and being very succinct and being very clear could like have its benefits. So I started reaching out to Target buyers, like literally Googling them, looking them up on LinkedIn, emailing them. And one day, somebody actually responded and he was like, oh, this actually sounds really cool, but I'm not, I'm not a cosmetics buyer anymore. Amanda Latimer is now the buyer. So now I had her name and like, she is the reason that we launched in Target solely. I was super strategic to launch Savage, which, which was a brand new lip color. We launched it on target.com only and like told all of our audience about it. Like buy this on target.com. We did so well in Target that the in-store buyer was like, let's have a line review. I don't even know what a line review is. I'm scrambling. I'm trying to reach out to people, ask what it is or how it works. I take this really ugly display in there. I fly to Minneapolis and like, two minutes because I thought that I would be able to set up. They give you no setup time. They're just like, I'm in the hallway trying to put together this display. And then the buyer just walks in. She was like, hi, I'm Linda. And I was like, hi, I'm Melissa. I need to set up. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I just felt like such a rookie. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So ultimately, Target says, we'll take a shot on you. 
and they launched us in 44 stores, which is such a small amount considering Target had like 1,800 stores. So we had to go into overtime trying to like teach our customers which of those stores we were in. And like we were so successful in those 44 stores that six months later, they offered us to be in 450 stores. How would I describe Melissa when I first met her? The humility, the um, stick to itiveness is what I remember the most, right? Because when I first met her, she had just come off of Shark Tank. She had been rejected on Shark Tank. But she didn't take it as rejection, right? She took it as inspiration. I met her on the show floor of the Cosmoprof. And then I got introduced to her and we started talking. And I could just sort of feel the energy and, 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 the, um, and the enthusiasm for what she was doing. But then also, as I said earlier, the humility around how much she was looking to learn and how much she was just absorbing. And then, you know, shortly thereafter, to see her just take those things and just act upon them and execute, execute, execute. I've gained more confidence in who I am, but I've in some ways lost confidence in the business. It's like as I've grown the business and like now I have all of these, this like fantastic team, I'm like getting further and further away from like the actual core of the business. Like I'm having to think about things that I never cared about. I think the solve is really making sure that you focus on the things that make you tick and get rid of the things that don't. So it's like hire the people to do the things with excellence that you don't want to do. I'm never going to let go of the lip bars marketing. I'm never gonna, not going to have feedback on the lip bars creative. I'm never going to not have feedback on the product. I have absolutely loved being a part of the growth of the lip bar. I'm just amazed at the products that we're able to create. Just even the process of how we're, we're getting tighter and stronger. Our team is so strong and talented. I get to learn from a lot of the women that I work with. Um, it makes me a better professional, a better woman. We're very, we're a very close-knit team. So we, we just all have grown so much. And I'm so excited and so proud of how far the Lip Bar has come. So we're coming up to the warehouse area. We didn't used to occupy these shelves. These shelves didn't even used to be here. But as we've grown, we've like expanded outward because we were just in this small space. <laughs> this is so funny for me to see. Really? You know, we have Walmart now. We have other oh stuff. Oh my God, here. look at Thread right here. Hey, okay. It's ready to ship. <laughs> look at all the blue stuff. I know. Hi, I'm Melissa. Carol? Yeah. Carol, Caitlin? Yeah. Oh, Carol. two Carols and a Caitlin. Okay, nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for your hard work. I really appreciate it. I can't believe I've never been here. This is like really surreal for me. So this is how this the orders is us. get shipped. Exactly. So you get your products, you scan, scan, scan. I used to take down every single label. I remember. And then we moved on to the Dymo. Girl. I Do know. you see we have three industrial sized label printers? That's know. us. Our orders come out of these two, and then the other one has the labels that come out. I am very proud of you, Melissa. Very proud. The fact that, like, to a degree, it feels like by me working afternoons, you all kind of raised yourself, and I didn't have to have any problems with y'all sneaking out, going crazy, doing crazy things. You all were, like, stable. You stayed at home. I mean, you all fought, but I didn't know anything about that. But you all are stable. You knew what to do and what not to do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was, like, watching you and knowing that you were working really hard, like I felt like it would have it would have been wrong for me to kind of betray you in, in that way. I felt like you gave us like all this freedom and you trusted us. And I, I think that I've always had this like, I've always valued when people like trusted me or gave me the benefit of the doubt. So it's like, I never like want to betray people's trust. Like you raising me independently by example, is part of the reason I was able to like, you know, take rejection or just be very resilient or just watching you be resilient, like from coming home and then just deciding like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to raise these little girls. So 10 years have passed. And if I had to think about like who I was, you know, this 
this 25 year old starting this company with nothing, who knew nothing, and now this 35 year old who has amassed so much knowledge and so much experience. Um, I think that in some ways I'm more confident, but in some ways I'm probably less confident because now I know better. Now I know, you know, the benchmark of success. Now I know how things work. So it's really easy for me to, to be critical. It's really easy for me to say like, that's not right.